Hello, we are back and we're going to read chapter four today and chapter five. Chapter four is titled Zinkoff's First Day. Zinkoff gets into trouble on his first day of school. In fact, before he even gets to school, he's in trouble with his mother. Like the other neighborhood mothers of first day, first grade children, Mrs. Zinkoff intends to walk her son to school. First day is a big day and mothers know how scary it can be to a six-year-old. Zinkoff stands at the front window looking at all the kids walking to school. It reminds him of a parade. His mother is upstairs getting dressed. She calls down, Donald, you wait. Her voice is firm for she knows how much her son hates to wait. By the time she comes downstairs, he is gone. She yanks open the door. People are streaming by. Mothers hold the hands of younger kids while fourth and fifth graders yell and run and rule the sidewalks. Mrs. Zinkoff looks up the street. In the distance, she sees the long neck of a giraffe poking above the crowd, hurrying along with the others. It's him. It must be him. He loves his giraffe hat. His dad bought it for him at the zoo. If she has told him once, she has told him 50 times, do not wear it to school. The school is only three blocks away. He will be there before she can catch him. With a sigh of surrender, she goes back into the house. The first grade teacher stands at the doorway as her new pupils arrive. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to school. When she sees the face of a giraffe go by, she nearly swallows her greeting. She watches the giraffe and the boy under it march straight to a front row desk and take a seat. When the bell rings, the teacher, Miss Meeks, shuts the door and stands before the desk of an unusually hatted child. The other students are openly giggling. She wonders if this boy is going to be a problem. This is Mrs. Meek's year to retire and the last thing she needs is a troublesome first grader. That's quite the hat you have there, she says. In it, a matter, it's, ooh, excuse me. It is in fact, remarkably lifelike. The boy pops to his feet, he beams. It's a giraffe, so I see, but I'm afraid you'll have to take it off now. We don't wear hats in the classroom. Okay, he says cheerfully. He takes off the hat. You may be seated. Okay, he seems agreeable enough. Perhaps he will not be troublesome after all. Now she has to tell him that he cannot keep the hat with him. She hopes he won't break out bawling. First graders can be so unpredictable. You never know what might set them off. She tells him, she keeps an eye on his lower lip to see if it will quiver. It does not. Instead, he pops to his feet again and brightly chirps, yes, ma'am, and hands the hat to her. Yes, ma'am, where did that from come? She smiles and whispers, thank you, down now. He whispers back, yes, ma'am. 26 heads turn to follow her as she carries the three foot hat to the cubby holes at the back of the room. She labeled the cubbies the day before, and now she suddenly real realizes she doesn't know which one belongs to the boy. She turns, what's your name, young man? He jumps to attention and belts in a full voice, zinc off. She has to turn her face to keep from laughing out loud. In all her 30 years of teaching, she has never known a student to announce him or herself in such a manner. She turns back to him and gives a slight bow, which somehow seems to be called for. Thank you. And no need to shout, Mr. Zinkoff. Do you have a first name? The class is a Twitter. Donald, he says. Thank you, Donald. And you may keep your seat. There is no need to rise when you speak. Yes, ma'am. The cubbies, as the classroom seating soon will be, are in alphabetical order. She goes straight to the last cubby hold and inserts the giraffe. The space is not deep enough to hold it all. It looks as if a baby giraffe is napping in there. The thought comes to her that Donald Zinkoff, in more ways than cubby holes, will always be easy to find. Chapter five, all aboard. Miss Meeks stands at the head of the class and for the 31st and last time gives her famous opening day speech. Good morning, young citizens. It pleases her to think that many years down the road, a student or two might recall that Miss Meeks called them young citizens in the first grade. She feels that America's children are babied a bit too much and way too long. Welcome to your first day at John W. Statterfield Elementary School. This is a big day for you. Not only is it the first day of the school year, 
it is the first day of 12 school years. Hopefully, 12 years from now, every one of you will graduate from high school. That sounds like forever from now, doesn't it? A sea of nodding heads, as always. But it will come. 12 years from now will surely come, and you will have learned how to write a topic sentence and how to solve an equation and even how to spell the word. She pauses dramatically. She opens her eyes wide as if seeing the wonderful future. Tintinabulation. Audible gasps come from the sea of wide-eyed, O-mouthed faces. A few shake their heads in vigorous denial. She sneaks a peek at Donald Zinkoff. He alone is grinning, giggling actually, as if he'd been tickled. By the time you graduate from high school, many of you will already be driving cars and holding jobs. You will be ready to take your places in the world. You will be ready to travel all the way across the country by yourself if you wish, or to another country. You'll be ready to begin your own families. What a wonderful adventure it will be. And it all begins here, right now, today. It will be a journey and an adventure of many days. She pauses. She holds out her arm. How many days, you ask? Several hands shoot up. She knows if she answers them, someone will knock her whole point out of whack with a guess in the millions. She ignores them. She goes to the board. With a new year, crisply cut length of chalk, she writes in large number on the green slate, 180. That, she says, is the number of days we are required to be in school each year. She turns back to the green board. Under 180, she writes times 12. That's the number of years you will attend. Now let's multiply. She does the math on the green board, writing the numbers slowly, grandly. 180 times 12, 360. 180, 2,160. You can see she does the multiplication there. She points to the bottom number. There it is. She taps the green board twice with the chalk. 2,160, the days of your journey. That is how long your adventure will last. Every one of those days will be an opportunity to learn something new. Just imagine how much you can learn in 2,160 days. She pauses to let them imagine. 2,160 adventures. 2,160 opportunities to become whatever you want to become. This is what you've been waiting six years for. This is the day it begins. She wishes she had a camera. She looks at the clock above the door. She acts surprised. Oh my goodness, look at that. Time is passing. Before you know it, there will be only 2,159 days left. Our first day is passing by and we haven't learned a thing yet. What do you say we get this learning train started? She reaches into her desk drawer and pulls out the old navy blue train conductor's cap. For the 31st and last time, she puts it on. She pumps her hand twice. Toot, toot. All aboard the learning train. First stop, writing my own name. Who's coming aboard? 26 hands shoot into the air and Zinkoff jumping to his feet so fast that he knocks his desk over with a nerve slapping racket thrusts his hands up and bellows to the ceiling. Yahoo! It's chapter five.